Hey everybody, Mark Johnson here, founder and creative director of Able Ape Studios, back again with a new project, and this project is Artist Interviews. In this series, I would like to be able to interview artists, you know, that maybe I know personally, artists that maybe I reach out towards and are willing to be interviewed. You know, however I can make it happen, I'm out there to look for artists that I find their, their work interesting. I find that the, the way that they work and their style, um, and just kind of even the, their story uh, is something that would be great to share for other artists to kind of be able to, you know, see that not every path has to be the same way and also at the same time, you know, not every path leads to, you know, success, you know, and whatever the case may be, you know, hopefully we can find both ways to be successful as artists and also to, you know, develop um, skills that will help us, um, you know, skills outside of being an artist that will help us uh, better our opportunities to be successful. The first artist that I am, or got the opportunity to interview with is named Daniel B.B. Um, I've known him for a while, um, haven't really been able to, you know, get to the point where we're, you know, on the same level. Um, at a certain point, you know, it just came, came clear to me that, that he's someone that I would like to, you know, be able to talk with. And so I, you know, hit him up and he was down for it and so we were able to schedule something and so what proceeds is the video of our interview. Hey, I'm Daniel Beattie, this is my art studio, come on in. So I set up a few questions to ask Daniel, just to kind of, you know, help, you know, uh, uh, you know, lead the conversation and to get to the points that I would like to be able to, you know, pull out or draw out to help other artists as myself and other people who may view this. And so the first question that I asked Daniel was, you know, growing up, you know, how did, you know, he learn or see that his creative talents were something that um, he could develop and make a living with? My parents are artists, yeah. Okay. So I was always I was raised around two artists, and then always been doing art. Okay, that yeah. would help. I didn't have parents that were yeah artists. I had, you know siblings that were artists. But, yeah. Um, yeah, my parents both. My mom, uh, she like teaches block printing and and acrylics, and then my dad's taught. My, my dad was an interior designer, and he always was doing art. And, us three kids, we all were artists. So, so you have what, brother and sister? Yep, younger sister, older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Have they took off in art too? Yeah. yeah. My brother. Um, well, see, I do graphic design too, so that's kind of where the money's at. Right. It's like freelance graphic design, screen printing, all to make make a logo, do right. do the shirts and letterhead and envelopes. Banners, all that Business stuff. Cards. Yeah, everything like that. So that's that. My brother and I both do that, and then we grew up doing the spray painting stuff on trains. Okay. Uh, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. So how did that develop into like the? Well, um, how would you, how would you? As time's gone on, this stuff is getting more popular mm -hmm. and more accepted. Okay. So I just I quit doing it illegally and started painting on canvases, and then. 
I think I kind of established a good name with the graffiti stuff, and then right. people want to buy my stuff because right. I'm that guy that yeah. has it. That's doing it the right way. Not <laughs> yeah. Places, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. So that's been kind of cool. I mean, I've been screen printing for 12 years, 11 years now. And then uh, I had like a four color press, and then, uh, then I got a six color. And that thing's money, man. I need to make money with that. I just make like my own designs. This is one of my shirts, but this one kind of washed out a little bit. But just go to festivals, man, and run a booth. And That's how you do it. Yeah. So my second question for Danny was, you know, as he was growing up, did he have any uh, artists that he admired, you know, like um, working artists that he admired, or just um, any people that were, took a mentorship role in his life? Yeah, yeah, a lot of friends that, a lot of like the graffiti kids like helped okay. me learn how to do like So these are actually gym. people you knew, these were like people artists that you kind of like read, read in the magazine or read Oh no, book. no, there was like people I'd see somewhere and then I'd be like whoa look at that thing that guy did and then <clears throat> you know they became like a mentor as time went on you know that's much better that's yeah way better yeah yeah and then uh I always looked up to my parents my dad's a really sick artist he did that thing that's my dad's he did that left-handed and he's right-handed right yeah okay. he's super so I was always, and he was always cool, like down to show me some techniques and stuff, you know. But he also didn't like press it on us, like you do art. You, you gotta know? do this. You can't yeah. go outside until you finish. Yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like Miles, he, uh, that's my son. He, he, he likes the computer, and that's what kids like these days. Right. But um, I'm always in the living room drawing and stuff in the evenings and listening to music and. He'll come out and sit and look at it and critique with me. He's like, oh, I like that, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. they give me good feedback or, or be like, that one's kind of weird, or, you know what I mean? So, it's pretty rad. And then he's he's done. Yeah, my family's all, all about art, all the time. Yeah, I think that would make it even more empowering to kind of, you know, fall in that. If you had parents involved or, you know, yeah. other family members. Yeah. Kind of keep it yeah, but I think, and then my my son's mom is a musician. She's kind of a rock star, and then I'm a, an artist, and I'm kind of a rock star. And he's kind of like, nah, no, <laughs> you know, natural thing for kids to do. Because <laughs> they want, I don't know, it's, um, I, it's probably they want to feel their own way. Yeah, 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 and I want them to be able to do that for sure. I just like to har or you know, uh, have a nice sanctuary where we can sleep and eat and do our thing and then, yeah my third question for Daniel was does he carry a daily routine or does he kind of just kind of work as he's inspired or as he's completing the piece or commission daily from like 8 to 2 okay so yeah. you morning routine kind yeah of I get my kid to school every day and then come here and work and I usually am done by 2 you know because okay, so I pick him up at 3 and then then I kick it at home at yeah. night. Yeah. And you live in Chico? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I was living in Paradise for like six years, on and off. I was all over the place yeah. for a while there. So, but now, I'm just kind of grounded out. Things are good. Things are good. Things are good, man. The fourth question that I asked Daniel was, does he have a preferable medium that he likes to work in? I've been right. I've been using the acrylic paint pens. Have you seen those? But these they're sweet. They're they're paint pens. They're uh, but they're acrylic. Oh, okay. So I use like acrylics and spray paint, mm -hmm. and then paint pens, and get it all dialed in. A lot of paint pens. I've always used a lot of paint pens. They're sick, dude. But they give you that you can do fine line, you can do a thick line with yeah, that. Yeah, that's a fat one, and then these are there's thin ones, and then there's even thinner ones too. I think these, you know, there's like this tip, and then there's like the okay. fine ones. And when, you, when it's acrylic, it's acrylic paint. Yeah, it's acrylic, so it's not all like these ones here. Are oil are the old school like old, uh, yeah, shakers that 
they smell pretty strong. Right. And then I got like, this is water-based spray paint. You can spray this inside. Okay. And it won't, it's not toxic. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. 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 So this is like acrylic paint in a spray can, which is awesome. That is pretty cool. Yeah. See, I never ventured in any of these. So little things. kids can play with spray right. paint now. Okay. Right. Sure. Your parents still feel good about it. <laughs> you know At one I mean? time, there was it's a time. It's becoming so. more like it's an art form. Mm. It's more people are starting to use spray paint more for like cool murals and art, and it's, it's not just a graffiti thing. Yeah, you know? it's not so much yeah. a graffiti thing. Anymore. Yeah. I always thought they were thick sharpies. Yeah, so no, the, these things are awesome. Yeah, I did a lot of almost all those canvases with paint pens and oh, yeah. acrylic paint. The fifth question that I had for Daniel is I wondered what um, he does technically on the, you know, daily to kind of get better, um, or does he kind of do research, you know, kind of find ways to expand his art and continually get better? Um, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm always, uh, like, I'm on YouTube trying to figure out new techniques and, you know, um, I started making beats, which is also an art form, you know, mm -hmm. making music. Right. So I'll, a lot of the time I'll come here, get a beat going, do some screen printing, always trying to make new designs for shirts and come up with like the selling, the one that's going one to that's sell. Get me and then I saw so I make a lot of designs, but then I put a lot of screens on. I'll just spend a lot of time kind of spinning my wheels, but at the same time, the momentum's kind of just pushing me through the day, you know, gotcha. so Good. hopefully it'll all pay off, man. Oh well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, that's the plan. That is yeah. The yeah. I spent a lot of years doing graffiti on trains, mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, um, when I moved here, was still doing a little bit, but then uh, got a divorce from my son's mom, and then I, I went down the, the wrong road, right, right, and, right. uh, yeah, and then just kind of quit doing the graffiti, and I still did art, but it was all more like drug-induced, like chaos, like a lot of the stuff I'll see that people got, I'm just like, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Look at it. yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Do you have a piece <laughs> like that? that I painted over most of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I didn't like them. You used to want to have them around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. paint over it. <laughs> the sixth question that I asked Daniel was, what was his best experience as an artist? I would say like last summer was awesome, man, because I came from being on major drugs for eight years and like in and out of being homeless and okay. living in my car and doing that vibe. And then I got in trouble, got put on probation, did the NA thing got clean, went to rehab at the age of 36, all that happened, and then rebuilding my self-esteem and all that was, was still a, a journey, right. but last summer was awesome because I took what the skills I have and went started like bolded up and went into festivals and like started doing my art and people just gave me like awesome feedback and then by the end of la like all summer last last year, I was just doing art, dude, doing art and like feeling love. Yeah. And they're like, "Come back, you know, we need you around here." So that that was epic. That, so and to really be to be there, not on drugs and not all focused on the drug, more mm -hmm. just like shining, dude. And it felt so good just to be alive and be able to shine. Right. So your festival event is really only been just the one year. Yeah, this last summer last was year. my first, first, time first time like, that. legit, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm still, now I'm like, I, I mean, I got three and a half years off of all that hard right. shit, so I'm feeling, this summer I'm excited for. Yeah. 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 Cool. Trying to just get out there and do, do good things, man. Yeah. The seventh question that I asked Daniel was, you know, obviously he has a working space, you know, a nice working studio, uh, but... If there was anything that he would like to change about it, you know, you know, and you know, enhance about it, or if there's any maybe other places that he likes to work as an artist. 
Yeah, this is awesome, but it's also, I found, I've been taking canvases up into the nature, and I'll go sit out in a meadow and draw. I have this, but I also like to go it's places, easy. yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I love having this, this is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I create, I like creating in, in front of people, or I like to go out and in solace, yeah, and, okay. and meditate. And, chill and then I also just do a lot of like doodling and sketches at coffee shops like okay. I like social environments I like right. I like my cave here too right. I like my house it's just I'm pretty much always doing art right. so it's like oh what, uh, what journey am I on now all yeah. in all in on what you do yeah the eighth question that I asked Daniel you know being that we are in the era of social media and you know social media promotion I asked him if there was a you know a, a routine or a pattern that he used uh, social media to either get gigs get commissions or just kind of find out about shows or even to promote his own work for like a few months there I was every morning I'd go to the naked lounge and drink coffee and just do a sketch and then I'd take a picture post it on Instagram get you know feedback feel like People were liking it, and now I, now I did, have been doing a lot, but I haven't been posting anything okay. because when I have an art show, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, I saw that on Instagram," and you know what I mean. Okay. So I'm trying to like the anticipation for what you're gonna show at the, at yeah, the show. Yeah. So when I have a show, I'll have a bunch of stuff. It's like old school art show. Like, oh, this dude's been working for his band, and then have a bunch of new stuff that's new. Yeah. There's other platforms, uh, websites that you can sell your art on too. Okay. Um, I just found out a couple, like Saatchi Art. Okay. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. I've heard of. It's like S A A C H I, Saatchi Art. You can post your art, uh -huh. sell it, and they'll and then you can say hi, this much for prints. Uh -huh. um, if someone orders a print, they get a little bit, and you get a chunk of money. Got gotcha. you. And then, uh, so I've heard of Shopify, Etsy. I do Zazzle. I'm I have an Etsy account, but it was mostly for ju uh, jewelry. jewelry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That kind of. Uh, that's and then I've the had like I, I used to do web design and mm -hmm. all that too. So I've had a couple different portfolios and never really did the networking thing that well. Okay. So, but Facebook is good. I think what I want to do is just cancel my Facebook and just start a business one. Right. But I need to get every all my ducks in a row, yeah, which is coming up. Yeah. Right, you know it's yeah. all process. It's yeah, all it process. is process. No, it's all process. You know, it is. You want to get? Yeah, I have, I have a vision. So yeah, that, uh, yeah, and I'm slowly working towards it. And the ninth and final question that I asked Daniel in this artist interview was if there was a place that he would like to travel to uh, to gain, you know, further inspiration, maybe even knowledge of a different culture that would help him um, or help inspire him in his creative work, what place would that be? Travel to. Oh man, I wanna go all over. I've never left the United States. Okay. I mean, I'd like to go to like Peru, I'd like to go to Canada, I'd like to go all over and just do art. Right. Cause I feel like you know, I would do good anywhere I go, mm -hmm. you know? Right, you kinda got the, gra but, the grass root part of it. Yeah, so what it is, I have my son and it's like, his mom lives here mm -hmm. and uh, so we kind of can juggle our times with him. He's getting older, he's almost 15. And so that's great. I'm kind I can go for a few days at a time. She'll watch him and then we, she can do her thing and vice versa, you know what I mean? So, and then, but yeah, I want to go, I want to go all over the place, man, and do where I want to take my son with me and, right. and sure. do a bunch of things. Last weekend I went, I was up in Nevada city. I did like a, a craft fair. Okay. Just like brought a bunch of art and some shirts and stuff. And so, how do you find find out about it before it was so in time that you could either create work? Or yeah, that's the there? that's the tough part. I think I'm gonna start doing the Thursday night markets, okay. and then uh, and then I just go to festivals during the summer, and then right. during the winter I I go down to Oakland and right. Nevada City. And, gotcha. and what do you do when you're in Oakland? Do you go to go the shops there? Uh, I go do live art at this venue that they have like music at night and then do live art and try to sell a couple canvases and right. to pay for your trip and the time down there. Yeah, kind of, dude. <laughs> yeah. 
it's more just fun, but yeah, dude, it's, I don't know. Because as time goes on, and my art is evolving, and it's getting better, so and people like it. I just have to go where like-minded people are. For sure. sure. That, okay, that's also the other thing is that I wanted to kind of get around people who are the art, you know, that do art. Yeah. To kind of, you know, in a sense, pick their brain a little, but yeah, yeah. Know, kind of, you know, show the camaraderie, show what like, like everyone has kind of a, a similar story, but sometimes a little different. Yeah. Know, when it comes yeah. to artists. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've known you for years. It seems like it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I didn't, Probably not as intimately as this. Like I've yeah. been to your studio. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen your artwork around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been. It's been yeah. Good. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, the first artist interview with Daniel BB. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I know that I'd like to continue doing this. It was a fun uh, to actually get to go to see his studio and see all the artwork that he has available, and just kind of to be able to pick his brain and see where he's at in his continuation um, or continuation and growth as an artist. Um, I think it was special that he, you know, kind of talked about some of the struggles that he's going in right now or had in his past. I think, you know, sometimes uh, when we talk to successful artists or people who've had success, they kind of brush over the things that they um, had to go through to kind of get to the point where they're more successful. And I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I got to talk to Daniel when he was at a point where he was basically transitioning from you know being what he was to being what he is now and inspired that he's definitely on a, on a great path so yeah if you like this video and like videos like this you know to continue on definitely give me a like um, if you like what I'm doing with the channel definitely subscribe so you don't miss um, either another artist interview or other posts that I post up on my channel and if you want to share with me uh, maybe in the comment in the comment box below uh, what you liked about this video and you know what I can possibly do better in future videos to come so like we always do at this time have a blessed day see you on the flip side let's go